Señoras y señores. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the annual meeting of the Boards of Governors of the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Investment um, Corporation 2023. This first part of our meeting will be uh, chaired by the outgoing chairperson of the Boards of Governors of the Bank and the Corporation, the Honorable Nigel Clark. Moreover, at the head table, we have uh, Mr. Elon Goldfein, President of the Inter-American Development Bank and uh, President of the Board of Executive Directors of the Inter-American Investment Corporation. Madam Reina Irene Mejia Chacon, Executive Vice President of the Bank, Mr. James Scriven, General Manager of the Corporation, and Mr. Gerardo Corrochano, Secretary of the Bank and of this meeting. I now give the floor to the Chairperson of the Board of Governors of the Bank and the Corporation, the Honorable Nigel Clark. Good afternoon, governors. The necessary quorum is present, and therefore, I now call to order this inaugural session of the annual meeting of the board, boards of governors of the bank and the corporation. On behalf of all governors, I'd like to thank the Republic of Panama, and particularly Panama City, for the warm welcome and gracious hospitality. As the outgoing chairperson of the Board of Governors and the Bank, of the Bank and the Corporation, I will uh, rise to the podium to provide a synopsis of the work done since our last annual meeting. Uh, forgive the little change of location there. Uh, I want to thank uh, President Golfan and again thank the, uh, the Republic of Panama and the city of Panama as well for hosting this meeting. Uh, this meeting this year represents the first face-to-face -face meeting with the expanded participation since 2019. So it's the first face-to-face -face meeting in four years. You'll recall that the 2020 meeting was suspended and the meeting in 2021 was held in Barranquilla with a reduced participation and the 2022 meeting was held virtually from Washington. As such, this year's staging of the annual meeting is symbolic in quite a number of ways, uh, including the important role played by the IDB group during the course of the pandemic in supporting member countries uh, in enduring the pandemic and in the recovery. The fortitude and resilience shown uh, in the region in weathering the storms of the last three years and the strengthened partnership of the IDB group uh, with its borrowing countries and all member countries was highlighted and surely has been a welcome feature of the past several years. The IDB group and countries work together to entrench macroeconomic stability, to deepen resilience, and to address the social gaps that emerged uh, or were intensified during this period. In addition to tackling the residual impacts of the debilitating COVID-19 pandemic, our countries are now faced with new global setbacks, uh, such as the effects of Russia's war on the Ukraine and its domino effects, the increase in the prices of energy and food commodities, as well as the inflation that this has engendered across the world. The response of monetary authorities with the tightening of interest rates and the contraction of financial conditions around the world. The magnitude and nature of the COVID-19 pandemic and the, re the corresponding government, government responses have resulted in an exacerbation of debt-to-GDP ratios 
across many countries, and particularly uh, countries in the Caribbean. At the same time, citizens are increasingly demanding more and better public services from governments across the region, and this exacerbates tension. There are growing expectations among citizens uh, in our region for good health care, for better sanitation, for improved education outcomes, and for other publicly delivered services. And governments have no choice but to respond. The confluence of these issues, higher debt, increased poverty, exacerbated social inequalities, and increased demands for better services, while having limited resources to do so, limited by uh, fiscal, the availability of fiscal space, means that countries will have to turn to the IDB group for requisite support in the form of reforms, but also financing. As such, we welcome the operational update provided, noted, or noting the increase in approval amounts. The average approved value of the last five years was $12.75 billion, which represents a 21% increase from the preceding five-year period. I think the management represents a round of applause for that uh, improvement. In addition, a number of our borrowing countries are in the category of, of small and vulnerable. And I'm pleased to update the membership of the governors of the IDB that approvals for small and vulnerable countries, what we call uh, technically the C and D countries, I think we need to upgrade that to the A and B countries, were approximately 5.8 billion in 2022, an increase of 8% over the previous year, and those allocations represented 46% of all approvals in 2022, which is 11 percentage points above the 35% uh, target in the corporate results framework. So the IDB uh, certainly mobilized and came to the support of small and vulnerable groups in 2022. This region requires bold and creative action with the support of partners such as the Inter-American Development Bank. And as the region's oldest and largest development institution, the role of the IDB in advancing the development and welfare and advancing the regional priorities of our countries is most critical and important. As governors are aware, prior to the pandemic, uh, and other global shocks that emanated from the pandemic, the IDB group has been engaged extensively in uh, analytical work to ensure that the bank is effective in addressing the development needs of the region as part of the mandate set forth in the Baron Kia resolution of 2021. During the March 2022 annual meetings, governors considered this anal analytical work in a desire to expand on its findings with a focus on development effectiveness, private sector uh, growth and participation, and advance in the climate change action and social agendas. We passed the Washington Resolution, uh, which mandated the IDB Board of Executive Directors and IDB Management to prepare a report advancing the operational and institutional reforms outlined in the analytical work. There's continuity in the process of addressing the meeting of the Washington Mandate. As uh, the President outlined in his remarks, uh, no reform agenda will be left behind. The change in global, regional, and domestic risks in Latin America and the Caribbean require that the boards of, of governors and the board of uh, executive directors move swiftly on this and on the development of the next institutional strategy. In November 2022, due to extraordinary circumstances, 
the election of a new president of the IDB was held. And I want to use this opportunity again to recognize the professionalism, the openness, the transparency, the competition, and the inclusiveness that took place during that process. Uh, this was a historic demonstration of the unity of purpose and the resolve of our region and a historic turn for the institution. The election contributed to the renewing of the foundations of the IDB, the restoring of trust and confidence in its governance and the revitalizing of its purpose. The elected president, Mr. Uh, Elan Golfan, started his term on December 19th, uh, which is just shy of three months of taking office. I think you'll agree with me that he's off uh, to a most uh, prodigious start. And during this short time, uh, he's already demonstrated his commitment to fostering an environment of openness and trust. And we see that demonstrated in the unity of purpose that was all on display in our meeting moments ago. In January, when the new president gave his inaugural address, he laid out his priorities and his vision uh, to make this institution the most trusted, the most agile, and the most important development partner for Latin America and for the Caribbean. This annual meeting represents an opportunity to further strengthen this cooperation within the governors and this new management. In concluding, uh, fellow governors and delegations, I am confident that the IDB group will continue to strengthen and expand its support and assistance to the region as we work to strengthen institutions, to close social gaps across the region, to deepen private sector engagement, to promote regional integration, and to improve the resilience of our countries in the face of future challenges. It has been a privilege and an honor to serve you and to serve the Board of Governors of the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Investment Corporation as your chairman for the year 2022-2023. I thank you. Governors, I now invite the governors to elect one of our colleagues to serve as the chairperson of the Board of Governors of the Bank and Corporation. Pursuant to the regulations of the boards, the governor so elected will hold office as chairperson of the Boards of Governors of the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Investment Corporation until the next annual meeting of the Board of Governors. The Governor for Belize now has the floor, followed by the Governor for Paraguay and the Governor for the Domin Dominican Republic. Um, thank you, um, Mr. President. In my capacity as Governor of Belize, I am pleased to nominate the Governor of Panama, Mr. Hector Alexander, as a new president of the Boards of Governors of the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Investment Corporation. I now invite uh, the governor from Paraguay. You have the floor. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. As a governor for the Republic of Paraguay, I am uh, pleased to second the motion presented by the governor for Belize, such that uh, Mr. Alexander will be the new um, governor for the Boards of Governors of the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Investment Corporation. I'm sure that his leadership and professionalism will be key to confront the IDB's challenges. Thank you. Governor, the governor for the Dominican Republic now has the floor. Muchas gracias, Presidente. 
Sorry. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Chair. On behalf of the government of the Dominican Republic and as governor for the Dominican Republic, I would like to second the motions of both the governor for Belize as, for, as well as the governor for Paraguay, such that uh, Minister Alexander, Minister of Economy of Panama, be uh, nominated as governor or as chair of the boards of governors. Now for the Republic of Panama, uh, Mr. Hector Alexander as chairperson of the Boards of Governors of the Bank and the Corporation. The Governor for Paraguay has seconded the nomination. The Governor for the Dominican Republic has also seconded the nomination and proposes that the election be by acclamation. Ladies and gentlemen, accordingly, the Governor for the Republic of Panama, Mr. Hector Alexander, is hereby elected by acclamation to serve as chairperson of the boards of governors of the bank and the corporation. I now invite the new chairperson of the boards of governors to the platform. And I'll stand now. Okay. Uh, when, I, when he brings me, then I stand. Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. The IDB is back. Minister Clark, would you like a picture to both together in the center? No, 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 please, please. Picture a No, ahora viene, ahora viene la última. Usted que agradecer por su. No, pero sí, pero lo hago con mi amiga. O sea, ahora yo le mando un pollo para ya dar mi discurso. Ahí lo agradezco entonces. Es decir, puede pasar. Puede agradecer y pasar por cosas. Así va. Paso directo al pollo entonces. Sí. I now invite the Minister of Economy of uh, Panama, Minister Alexander, to uh, take the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Good morning, uh, esteemed uh, governors. Well, in fact, good afternoon. First of all, I would like to begin by thanking the governor for Belize, Mr. John Briseño, the governor for Paraguay, Mr. Oscar Llamosas Diaz and the Governor for the Dominican Republic, 
Mr. Jose Manuel Vicente Bo for their nomination and their support. I want to express uh, my deepest appreciation for being uh, elected new chairperson of the Boards of Governors of the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Investment Corporation. It is an honor. It is also a great uh, responsibility that I promise to discharge with great commitment as uh, this role requires in a search to make sure that these that our actions are always for a better future for our institutions and our countries. I would like to extend a very special greeting to my friend and the president of the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Investment Corporation, Mr. Elon, Elon Goldfein, the executive vice of president Reina Irene Mejia, the secretary of the bank, Gerardo Corrochano, and the general manager of the Inter-American Investment Corporation, James Scriven, Richard Martinez, Vice President for Countries, Benigno Lopez, Vice President for Sectors and Knowledge, Gustavo de Rosa, Vice President for Finance and Administration, and all other bank management and technical staff to the 48 official delegations gathered here today. Dear Rocio Medina Bolivar, IDB Group representative in Panama, it is always an honor to have you with us. After overcoming the COVID-19 crisis, the world economy is now facing Russia's war against Ukraine and tension in Asia, which has led to an increase uh, worldwide of uh, prices of energy sources, gas and oil, as well as some uh, foods such as wheat, corn, vegetable oils, and others. In addition to this, COVID-19 subsidies uh, to the population for main developed countries has led to an increase in world inflation, which in some countries is now at double digits. In order to combat inflation, the world's uh, central banks are increasing their interest rates as they seek to uh, limit the scourge while avoiding an economic recession. A tremendous challenge, without a doubt. Our country, uh, early in 2020, uh, started that decade with a government program that uh, prioritized education within a framework of strengthening its economic fundamentals, sustained economic growth, low uh, price increases, moderate unemployment, and a very low fiscal deficit timeline compared to the other countries in the world. At the beginning, of uh, the third month of 2020, we saw the first uh, COVID case, and we saw how in a few weeks, fiscal revenues were significantly uh, reduced. In order to safeguard the lives and the health of our people, many uh, mm, local economic activities were uh, limited. We saw also a limitation on economic activities uh, internationally, such as aviation, uh, cruise ships, and tourism in general. That year, Panama suffered one of its largest reductions in its economy, in its history, 18.5% drop. In order to uh, deal with that challenge, our government uh, amended its fiscal social responsibility law to unheard of levels, 2.5% of the fiscal deficit over nominal GDP for 2020, thereby leading to a strategy for uh, a gradual reduction, which we've achieved. And this year, we are down to 3.0%. Uh, Our government executed a large amount of its budget with international credit-derived resources. We have no central bank. While at the same time, we uh, energetically restructured our budget, focusing on health and the needs of those who were most impacted by the crisis. The government's strategy to manage public finances was based on using automatic stabilizers, which really bore uh, positive uh, results. Our economy has been recovering uh, quite well, with a real growth rate of 15.8% in 2021 and 10.8% in 2022. 
We have a projection of 5% uh, growth in 2023. That's in light of the effects of the current international situation. We can also underscore a reduction in unemployment, which is quite impressive, with a drop in unemployment from 18.5% in 2020 to less than 10% by mid-2022, thanks to a significant creation of formal jobs. It, it, it is appropriate to point out that during all of these years, we have met our fiscal deficit targets set in 2020, which, together with the development of other social policies, has allowed us to maintain our investment grade. As for the rest of our, for the rest of our, our, our administration, we intend to continue strengthening the economic fundamentals of our economy, continuing to attract foreign investment, while at the same time we will promote an ambitious public investment program with the support of one of our most important strategic partners, the IDB Group. Our government's priority is to continue uh, bolstering our fiscal policy to uh, generate confidence in our country, in focusing on the importance of public savings and central government revenues as we continue to reduce the public debt burden on our economy, as we have achieved over these last two years. Given all of these uh, challenges and the goals that we have set for ourselves, we are more than grateful for the support provided by the IDB Group, which in addition to providing finances, financing has provided us with technical assistance, which has led to our strengthening our capacity and invest in our ability to invest in projects in various sectors that are very important for the well-being of our country's citizens. Inequality, poverty, climate change, sustainable growth, infrastructure, biodiversity, social inclusion. These are the challenges that all of our countries uh, face. Panama, with the IDB Group support, seeks to address these problems through operations that include uh, lending, grants, technical assistance, and other programs. We are fully uh, convinced that all of us together can help the IDB Group continue to strengthen and bolster its activities so that it can support greater growth and development in our region. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chair. As uh, everyone here knows, at this inaugural session, the President of the Republic of uh, Panama will be joining us, Mr. Laurentino Cortizo. We will take a short 20-minute recess, during which we will see have a performance, Fiesta Panameña. We ask that you remain in your seats. Thank you very much. And now, we'd like to introduce Fiesta Panameña, led by the uh, Folkloric Dance Studio under Odette Cortez and Rafael John, with uh, Ormelis Cortez, conductor, and his uh, Folkloric Music Ensemble. A round of applause. Te canto Panamá, tierra de mis alegrías, de mi pena y mi esperanza, de la suerte de mis días. Thank you. 
Este fuerte aplauso despedimos a los conjuntos. We thank the dance crew for entertaining us with this wonderful performance of Isla Parameña.
damos la bienvenida al señor. We now welcome Mr. Laurentino. He saw the president of the Republic of Panama, who is joining us with the president of the IDB, Mr. Ilan Goldfein. It is now my pleasure and honor to invite Mr. Ilan Goldfein, President of the Inter-American Development Bank and President of the Board of the Inter-American Investment Corporation to take the floor. Mr. President. Good afternoon, boa tarde, buenas tardes, excelentísimo señor. Your Excellency Laurentino Cortizo, President of the Republic of Panama, Mr. Hector Alexander, Chairperson of the Boards of Governors of the IDB and IDB Invest, and the Minister of Economy and Finance of Panama, outgoing Chairperson. Nigel Clark, governors of the IDB and IDB Invest, heads of delegation, ambassadors, and members of the diplomatic corps, members of the board of executive directors, senior management of the bank and IDB Invest, guests, special guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be here today, here in Panama, for our annual meeting. This is my first as IDB president. We never forget the first time. Thank you, President Cortizo and Minister Alexander. I also thank all our Panamanian friends for their very warm welcome. I'd also like to thank the outgoing chairperson of our boards of governors, Minister Nigel Clark, for his outstanding work during this past year. And I would also like to welcome the incoming chairperson, my friend, Minister Hector Alexander. I look forward to working very closely with you. Since the last meeting of the IDB a year ago, that meeting was a virtual meeting, some countries of Latin America and the Caribbean have been able to see a recovery in jobs, jobs that have been lost during the pandemic. Last year, the countries of the region grew at the rate of 3.9%, and that exceeded expectations. But now, Growth is slowing down, and we know that the outlook is impacted by what we have experienced by the pandemic, by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, by record level inflation around the world, by the food insecurity we're experiencing and which has increased, and of course, the climate crisis. It is extremely important for us to consider these challenges today. They are not limited to individual countries. So we need to have a regional approach. And we also need to think globally, because some of these issues have a global scope. Allow me to first talk about Panama. Panama stands as an example of how it is possible to overcome difficult situations. This country's economic performance over time has been spectacular. 
we're speaking of an average growth of 6%. It's one of the highest in Latin America, if not the highest. Panama adopted a smart approach, a nonpartisan approach when it comes to the canal, how it's managed, how it was built and expanded to be able to allow transit of larger ships. We're speaking of a dialogue, of a state project. And all of this should be a lesson for all of us of what happens when you apply public policies consistently over time, even when you have a change in administration and a change in the party in power. I, from the very beginning, have stressed the importance of dialogue in a world that is increasingly polarized. Panama has achieved investments in infrastructure that have been able to speed up growth and expand services. Public services and infrastructure are the top priorities we are proposing. And Panama has also brought in the private sector with investments that have created jobs and economic opportunity. Partnerships with the private sector are instrumental if we are to have the desired development effectiveness. Latin America, not just Panama, must take innovative approaches. We need to look at those who can be creative, and we have the example of startups in Panama. We have not only innovators, we also have artists like Ruben Blades, another artist. And all of you are familiar, I'm sure, with the song Despacito. These are creative successes, and they should inspire all of us to dream, to dream of a region that is more prosperous in the future. Structurally, we face a triple challenge. And we must face this challenge, which is an age-old challenge, which has come to a head more recently. We need to do a better job of meeting the needs of our citizens. Because today, they demand better services, and rightly so. They want more education. They want more health. They want faster and safer transportation. They also want internet services, and why not? Climate. These demands, these claims are even harder to meet today because government resources are constrained. And Latin America has resource limitations because of fiscal pressures and because of high levels of indebtedness in some countries. So we could say, let's find the resources. But to do that, we need to grow. And that is where the region has faced difficulties, how to step up productivity. That is the triple challenge. Greater social demands, more fiscal constraints with a higher debt, and slow growth. That is the challenge we need to take on. That is the challenge we need to face. I said to governors this morning, our governments must currently deal with a historic plague of poverty and inequality, stepping up productivity, accelerating growth. And at the same time, they must deal with more frequent climate events with more limited resources. But I also ended my speech this morning saying that none of this is going to be easy. But we do have a vision. We do have a vision for the region, how to better deal with these global challenges. And part of that vision means changing our mindset about the region and its challenges. It means looking at the region not as a victim of global problems, but as a region which can contribute to their solution. And that means that we must reposition the region on the global stage. And let me give you two examples of what this means. 
climate change and food security. Our case is in point. Some of our countries stand as global leaders in, trans in their transition to net zero emissions. Just to mention one, Panama is just one of three countries which has a negative carbon position, and that is a fact. Let me mention a few more. About 30 percent of the region has renewable energy sources, and that sets us apart. In Central America, that number is 80 percent. In Latin America and the Caribbean, it's 60 percent. A number of countries are on their way to 100 percent. When our countries reduce emissions, this benefits the region, but it also benefits the rest of the world as countries strive to meet the Paris Agreement climate objectives. And then there's minerals. Latin America has two-thirds of the world's lithium supply, and lithium is part of the revolution when it comes to electric vehicles. They cannot run without the materials that are produced here. Therefore, the region could be a source of clean energy for the rest of the world. We must make the most of this competitive advantage and find ways to use these resources strategically in order to bolster inclusive development. If we do more with the green agenda and mitigate climate change, we will contribute not only to a local and regional public good, but also a, a global good that will benefit the rest of the world. And if we do so, we will encourage other companies in the private sector in other countries to come to the region to invest, because they too will want to show that they're environmentally responsible. They will want to show this to their consumers and to their shareholders. And then there's food security. This is another area in which we hold part of the solution. Our region is the leading exporter of foods. And even so, 60 million people in Latin America and the Caribbean go hungry. This is totally unacceptable. We can and must help solve this problem here in this region by finding local solutions that can also be applied elsewhere. If we undertake reforms, if our region can increase its production eightfold, it would be enough, as I was saying this morning, to feed 10 billion people. In other words, we could address our own needs and at the same time help meet the global food demands. Again, the region could be an important part of the global solution. So we need to start thinking differently and see ourselves as part of the solution. And then there's the IDB. The IDB has to seize this opportunity and others. I was saying this morning, we need a more effective IDB, a bank which focuses on results. It must have better metrics. It must improve lives. But to do that, we need to set priorities. As I was speaking with the president, I was telling him that if we have no priorities or if we have too many priorities, it's the same as having no priorities. So that's what we are working with, with the IDB governors, to set priorities jointly. First, there's poverty and inequality at all levels, food insecurity, health and education. All of these are interconnected, if you think about it. And then there's climate. Climate change is here. We see it in the region. Panama, for example, knows hurricanes and other extreme climate events firsthand. The IDB must work more closely with the governments and with the private sector, as well as other partners, to become more nimble and more innovative in tackling natural disasters and finding ways to promote climate change adaptation. 
And we're not just speaking of Central America or the Caribbean. Maybe they may be at the forefront, but there are other countries in the region that also face natural disasters. We also need to look at climate change mitigation. And we must work to preserve our biodiversity. I'm from Brazil, so I think of the Amazon, but that's not just Brazil. The Amazon region involves many countries, many peoples, many businesses, and we all must work together with a regional approach. It has to be a priority to invest more in physical, sustainable infrastructure, promoting regional integration and mobilizing private capital. When you build physical and digital infrastructure, you bring down the cost of doing business, and you can add billions of dollars to our country's GDP. This would have a direct impact of, on people. More GDP means more goods. And digitalization brings access to many opportunities which would benefit education as well as health and would have a positive impact on millions of people who may be excluded from the system today. And that includes many indigenous communities and Afro-descendants. So we need to do more for regional integration. I've said that it is part of the IDB's mandate. Its mandate gives it a unique opportunity to solve regional challenges. The vision for the IDB requires that it become the most important institution in Latin America. This means that it should be the institution that has a leadership role in the region. It has to be the preferred partner of countries in the long term, not just in the short term. It should also be the pride of its employees. And it should also be the knowledge bank for the region. If these are the right priorities, and if they're part of our vision, we will be able to do much more. We need to focus not just on the dollars or the resources we provide, we approve. What really matters is what we were saying before. It's the purpose. It's the results, the concrete results that we're able to del deliver to our citizens. That is an essential part of our vision for the IDB. And the more we focus on results, the more we will be able to do when it comes to gender and diversity. We'll be more inclusive in the work we do at the bank. I've already spoken too long, President, but I just wanted to let you know that the challenges we face did not come up overnight, so we cannot send them, solve them overnight or in just one day. But we will solve them if we follow Panama's example. If we are patient and persistent, that is what will enable us to achieve significant progress. Thank you very much, President Cortizo, for welcoming us so warmly. We hope to continue this conversation and to leave this annual meeting with concrete steps with a view to building a better IDB, which will better serve Latin America and the Caribbean. Thank you. Thank you, President Goldfein. And now I have the great honor of uh, inviting the President of Panama, Laurentino uh, Cortizo, to take the floor.
Ilan Goldfein, President. Ilan Goldfein, President of the Inter-American Development Bank and uh, the Board of Directors of IDB Invest, Hector Alexander, Chairperson of the Board of Governors of the IDB, IDB Invest, and Minister of Economy and Finance of Panama. Ministers, Vice Ministers, Reina Irene, Mejia Irene Chacon, Executive Vice President of IDB Invest, James Scriven, General Manager of IDB Invest, Gerardo Corruchano, Secretary of the IDB and IDB Invest, Heads of Diplomatic Missions Accredited in the Republic of Panama, Governors, Executive Directors, and members of senior management of IDB and IDB Invest, national authorities, special guests, to the media, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of the people and government of the Republic of Panama, I extend a cordial greeting and a warm welcome to governors and delegations of the 48 member countries of the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Investment Corporation. For Panama, it is an honor to host this annual meeting of the Boards of Governors, the first held uh, in person since the uh, pandemic, the worldwide pandemic. Panama's relationship with the IDB was born in 1959. And since then, the bank has provided technical assistance and financial support to enable the implementation of strategies, plans, and actions for the progress of our country. During my administration, the IDB's and IDB Invest's support has been targeted to address the challenges that our country uh, faces and have gone toward our government's programs to address priorities that are strategic and related to sustainable human development. The IDB support has been key to uh, carry out programs for inclusion and development for purposes of expanding opportunities so that our people, especially the most vulnerable Panamanians, to improve their living conditions. Through these programs, we have enhanced our health uh, uh, network programs, we've improved nutrition, we have promoted uh, food production, we have reinforced the, serv the services that we provide toward early childhood. We have also worked to improve potable water, our sanitation systems, both in the capital as well as in communities elsewhere in our country. The IDB's uh, support during my administration has also helped in other areas, such as in the digital transformation, where we have made quick progress. This was key for a remote uh, learning during the pandemic, and it continues to be very important for our educational system by improving its efficiency, its quality, and facilitating the con consolidation of an inclusive educational model in our country. Digitalization also contributes to the program Panama Online, which was created by our government for citizens' digital inclusion with greater equality of access to public services and with an important contribution to government transparency. Likewise, the digital transformation of Panama's tax authorities have improved our tax controls 
and enables compliance for taxpayers. Friends, in addition to that, financing has been very important to provide support to the most vulnerable communities, keeping more Panamanians from falling behind as a result of the effects of the COVID pandemic. Financial resources have been critical to promote our economy's recovery through financing to uh, support micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, as well as new enterprises, all of these being the source of most of Panama's jobs. Moreover, financing for uh, maintaining new and existing businesses has continued to uh, create and safeguard jobs nationally. As far as the economic recovery in this post-pandemic stage, Panama has reason to feel optimism. While our economy was severely uh, affected by the global uh, crisis with a uh, reduction of 17.7% in 2020, by 2021, our GDP had grown by 15.5%, with growth projected for 2022 at 10.5%, thereby surpassing the levels uh, achieved before the pandemic. I must, uh, before ending, express our congratulations to our Minister of Economy and Finance, Hector Alexander, and his team, our uh, work team, at the Ministry of Economy and Finance for the work you've done. Thank you all very much. Finalmente. Lastly, we would like to wish you, governors, great success at this uh, annual meeting, fully convinced that your decisions will be to the benefit of our peoples. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. There being no more items on the agenda, we hereby uh, adjourn the, this uh, session and uh, initiate the meeting of the Boards of Governors of the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Investment Corporation for 2023. Muchas gracias. Al presidente Goldfein y al presidente Cortizo para la foto. President uh, Goldfein, we ask that uh, we uh, prepare for the official photo.
Culminada la fotografía oficial, despedimos al señor presidente de la República de Panamá, Laurentino Cortizo Cohen. Gracias a todos por su asistencia, quedan invitados cordialmente a un almuerzo fuera del recinto y también anunciamos que la siguiente sesión será a las 2.